Somebody say amen again. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the fact that you have given to us life and you've promised life more abundantly. Lord, help us to be, like Paul told Timothy, to be a good soldier. That, God, that we would be uh, not like, uh, you know, cost to and fro by every wing of doctrine, but that, God, that we'll find ourselves a place, a place where we can be faithful, a place where we can be committed, Lord, with your cause and with your purpose. Lord, I thank you, God, for this fellowship, for this church, and for those who have truly given themselves. Lord, though we be few, let we be strong. In Jesus' name, and everyone said? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Uh, so t tonight we're going to be talking about trusting God with everything. And the question being asked is, what does that look like? What does it look like? Um, there's, uh, well, from, from Sunday, we, we, as we, we shared on Sunday morning, the message, Our Gifts to Christ, and where we talked in Psalm uh, 1, uh, 116. <laughs> yeah, Psalm 116, uh, verse 12, where it says, What shall I render unto the Lord? Um, and we gave you four things to think about. Uh, our love. There's a lot of people, I'll make this comment, there's a lot of people who say they love Jesus, but they don't fear God. Can I tell you, that's a, con that's a contradiction in terms. Um, we don't have time for that tonight, but I'm hoping we'll get, get on in the near future. Uh, we offer our, our love, we offer ourselves. The problem we have today in the world is we're looking for someone to please us. We're looking for something that suits us. We're looking, rather than being conformed and transformed by the renewing of our mind through the Word of God, we're trying to transform things to be conformed to us and our desires and, and what we prefer. And then we give ourselves over to God, and it's tough because that means we're going to have to submit. It, it, it talks about, uh, you know, basically dying to self, crucifying your flesh. And uh, there are there is desires in the flesh that's not good. Not all desires are bad. Uh, and, and, well, actually, does not Scripture say nothing of itself is sin? It's what we make with it. It's what we do with it. And yet whatever we do, do it wholeheartedly as if we're doing it for God, to bring glory to God. Everything should bring glory to God, which brings us to loyalty. Um, uh, and we can learn about loyalty. We can learn about loyalty from uh, those wise men who came looking for Jesus, and uh, they, they wouldn't accept a bribe from, uh, from, from people, from anybody in the world, because they, they, they had set their, their hearts and their minds on seeking the king. Amen? They followed the stars. And um, we learn what it means to worship him in his, in his holiness. And then finally, our talents. There are so many people who are part of the body of Christ. They have talents, they have abilities, but their talents are not being used to bring glory to God. Their interest, well, they have an interest in things of God, but they haven't invested themselves into the things of God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's because of what happens in our world and how we, where do we put our trust. Psalm 116 is where we're going to be tonight. And um, so, so trust can make or break uh, organizations and relationships. Um, you, but here's the thing. You can't see it. You can't touch it. But it's obvious when it exists or when it doesn't exist. It's obvious. Now, the idea, though, is when we start putting trust, we also have to find out how the trust and how the confidence is founded. What I mean by that is if, well, see, can you be taken at your word? Let me ask this. How many of you take God at his word? Because this is where it all starts. If you can't take him, if you can't believe his word, my word means nothing. If, if you can't, if you can't, if you don't have the confidence that he can fulfill a promise that he made, my promises won't mean anything. You know, if you, there's a song that I sing, it says, that, you know, some, and how many of you right now would say, you know, yeah, I'm pretty good about breaking promises or not being able to stay on task or not being focused or, uh, you know, and sometimes we get distracted. We, we, what, how many of you would ever say you made a promise to you? You, you had good intentions when you made that promise, but something happened. Maybe you did not intentionally break that promise. And, 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 and it, uh, yes? Oh, you're just waving your hand? Okay, we've got one honest man and a whole bunch, but that's okay. So let's, let's turn to the Word of God in Psalm 16, and let's hear what the Word of God has to say to us tonight.
Bye, Ang Mary. Psalm 16 Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, You are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after another god. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. That would be a good memory verse, wouldn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> I have set the Lord where? Before me. Always before me, because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. And, and actually, the, another passage from this particular chapter uh, has, um, has always spoke to me. It says that you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So trust, it can make or break a relationship. It can make or break uh, plans uh, that we may have had where we, and, and can I tell you, it, it takes a, a village to raise a family sort of thing. There's a lot of, a lot of things that we can talk about, cliched things that we can talk about, uh, you know, um, where, it, you know, it's the, the it's the, Let's see, how's that go about the team and the dream? You know, if you've got a team with a dream, you'll accomplish it. Amen. See, trust is going to determine success or failure. And in, in every area of our life, whether it's in our relationships, with our friends, with our spouses, with children, and with certainly with God. You know, the Bible tells us that we should trust the Lord our God, right? Isn't that right? Just like we should love him, or we say we love him, we should trust him. And when we say, Lord, I love you, he should be able to trust that we love him. But can you believe, well, watch this, can you believe the words that are coming out of your mouth? Or can you believe the words that are coming out of my mouth? All of our behaviors, all of our attitudes will be governed by whether or not we trust in God's character. How many of you know that God is who he says he is? And that if he's made a promise, he will see to it. If he's began a work, he will finish it. Uh, I would say that a majority of us, we have, a, we have a tendency, we start big, we have good intentions, but quite often we don't finish it. And there are many things that can thwart us, that can trip us up. You know, it, it may be you had a bad day, and so you let the bad day, you know, ruin the rest of your week or month or your millennium. Or you can say, you know what? I'm going to trust that God is going to see me through this. I'm walking through a valley of a shadow of death. I don't fear any evil because I trust that he's with me. Get this? He, he is with me. And here's what else I trust. I'm trusting that his rod and his staff will comfort me. It will correct me. It will guide me. Um, in the Psalms, we learn about God by someone's response to him. When we read the Psalms, you know, is if you think it's kind of a book of songs and prayers. And this is how someone else responds. Someone must trust God to be able to write something like Psalm 16.
Preserve me, O God, in you I put my trust. Preserve me, O God, in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my goodness is nothing apart from you. And Jesus says, you know, apart from me, you can do nothing. But he also promised, if I, if you abide in me and I abide in you, did you understand? Do you hear the promise being formed in, in his mouth? Can you believe what he said? So his affirmation, his, his statement, it, it, it saturates that God is better than anything else. Nothing can satisfy like God. The writer admits there that there's another way to live. He admits that. He admits, and, and, but, but you know, you can seek after uh, other gods, uh, including seeking after other things. But if we seek things and not God himself, the Bible tells us through, his, through this writer's eyes and, his, uh, and, and the way he sees this and the way I see it, if we seek out other things, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause our sorrows to be what? Multiplied. You know, in the scripture it says, uh, choose this day whom you'll serve. You have a choice. The choice is yours. You can serve God, the God of heaven, the God who created all the universe. You can serve yourself or you can serve whatever other uh, interests that you might have. But we don't need more. Think, let me lay, lay, lay this out. We don't need more. More what? Anybody need more food tonight? Or you got your, your belly's pretty full? You don't need more of that. You might need more tomorrow, but not now. Yeah. We don't need more anything else. What we need is the Lord. More things won't satisfy us. More things won't satisfy. More money doesn't satisfy you know what happens when you get more money? You what do you want? Money. You want more money. It's like, is, there, is there ever enough more money? Is there ever enough money? No, there's always room for more money. What about God? Is there ever room enough for him? Or do you think maybe we should need him more? How about prestige? How about you think you need more friends? And of course you have to define, what does it really mean to have real friends? What does that even look like? Only God can satisfy us for the rest of our life. Get this. He's, listen, he was there before, he, he was there when we came. He'll be there when we leave and praise the Lord. If we live, if we live a, according to his promise and his purpose, we'll be there in the hereafter with him. Isn't that, isn't that what his desire is? is it, what's your desire? Is your desire to be used of God? Well, in order to be used of God, you need to desire God more. And you have to trust him more. Only God will satisfy us for the rest of our lives. Everything else is temporary. Everything else will always lead you wanting more. Now, you say, well, pastor, you just said that uh, going after God, you should seek him more. Wh which is better? Which is better, seeking something that will last, seeking something that is that is this great? How about this? God so loved you. Listen, nothing in this world is going to equate to that at all. Amen? Everything else leaves us wanting, and he alone satisfies our souls. Our contentment, our peace, is grounded in who God is. And not, I mean, you're glad what God's been able to do for you. But can I tell you, if all it is, you're, you're seeking God just for what he could do for you, you're missing the greater part. God is more than what we want from him. The idea is to want the giver, not just the gift. The idea is to, to actually be one with the healer than just to be healed. The idea is to, to have our hearts mended. Amen? We need to be like the psalmist said. He says, I have no good apart from God. I don't have anything, apart from God, not, I don't have anything good. We did not earn our gifts. We did not earn, 
Now you can, listen, you can practice and become more able or more skillful in, with your abilities. But we didn't earn our gifts, we didn't earn our abilities, we, uh, or even our blessings. We didn't earn our blessings. Now there is, there is a side of this where there are rewards. But the ability to get those rewards, wait, you didn't earn that. This is my desire. This is my return to be used by God. I want to be something that was crafted, something that is absolutely a masterpiece. And in order for that to happen, I'd say, all right, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fall into your capable hands because I believe that you're able. You know, you know the old adage, let go and let God, what's that look like? Here again, what does it look like to trust God with everything? The rain's pouring down. You had plans for the day. Those plans are done. Well, what, what's your alternate? I know uh, a few times over the last couple of weeks, I've had plans to go this place to that place and another place, and there was a, a, I'll just say a change in atmosphere. The weather did not allow it, or perhaps maybe there were other people that, wait, it's just not going to work. We can't get this coordinated. We can't put it together. Do you know what I did? I said, do you know what? I'm, I'm not going to worry about this. I can't go do what I had planned. So I'm going to make an appointment with the Lord. I'm going to spend a little bit more time with the one that I want to spend more time with anyway. This is my desire. How about you? What is your desire? You know, the real gift is the giver himself. That's the gift. Amen. I mean, I, you know, the commercials that they have, the gift that keeps on giving. There's no greater gift than God. I mean, does, is he, how, what did I say this in the last couple of weeks? He's, he's a giver. He's a healer. He is the healing. Amen? The real gift is the giver himself. The real gift is actually having a relationship with God. He is seeking right now to have a relationship with you, with me. I trust God and his goodness above everything else. Trust him. Learn to trust. And, and I'm, I'm just, listen. Sometimes your heart needs to be reminded about the truth. Come by, say amen. How many of you need to be reminded of the truth from time to time? And, and, and you are reminded by the truth by declaring it in your own voice. So even from this week, if you'd read it in, in the bulletin, I said, read this out loud. I'm not going to ask who did it. I know, I know one did it. But sometimes, take the Bible, open it up. No, don't let someone read it. No, you read it out loud. Oh, God... For in you I put my trust. O oh, my soul, you have said to the Lord, You are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after other gods. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up the names on my lips. O oh, Lord, you are my portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my life. So we need to be reminded about who it is that's made you who you are. You know, when you were yet without form, God knew you. Amen. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. God knew you. And, and as you read these things, my suggestion was, and if you haven't done it, it's not too late. How many of you can breathe tonight? And you can read out loud. You have an opportunity to take this, this and take this suggestion or my advice if you will take my advice read it and see whether or not something resonates deep within you there are so many verses with just just within these couple of chapters but this one here so many verses resonated with me when i had that time alone this week my my plan was changed i was going this way and that way and i decided i was going to stay right here in the word of god i will bless the lord who has given me counsel my heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is my right listen, He is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. You know, if you try to read some of these and you're having a bad day, your flesh is going to it's going to kick, it's going to crawl, it's going to cause your skin to get all wiggly feeling and just like you got worms all. Maybe that, maybe, maybe not you, maybe that was just me. 
But what happens is suddenly you say, you know what? You start speaking to your soul and your flesh. You say, soul, why, listen, why are you cast down within me? I belong to God. What's wrong with you? And the soul will respond, I forgot. Turn to your neighbor and say, you know, I need a little reminder. And from time to time, I know that there are those here right now in this room that from time to time you make the phone call. And sometimes it is, some, did you know this? Maybe you didn't know this. Did you know once in a while you'll call somebody on the phone and they were actually glad to hear your voice? Especially when they know that that person on the other end wants to know how you are. How are you doing today? Or maybe they want to remind you, hey, did you know? Brother, did you know that you were fearfully and wonderfully made? Did you know that God has a plan for you? Did you know that God's got a purpose in whatever you're going through right now? He said, listen, I want to help you. Lord, you are my portion and my heritage and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in a pleasant place. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have gathered and Lord, we thank you, God, for so much that you have done for us. But Father, I seem to realize, at least it's come to my, my, my uh, knowledge and of my recognition that, Lord, that all the things that you do and some of the things that you allow to happen to us is only to remind us that you are God, there's none like you, that you are the one who restores our hope, you're the one who provides a way that we should go. Lord, we, have, we thank you, Lord, for your written word, but we certainly thank you for your, your personal hand in our lives. Lord, how long will you forget us? Sometimes it feels like we've been alone and alone. But Lord, we know that you won't forget us forever. We know you've never forgotten us. We know, Lord, that it, when we call upon your name, all we need to do, Lord, is to call upon your name and you'll, you'll respond. And I understand, God, that oftentimes you've tested us. I know, Lord, you tested my heart. But I also know that you visit me in the nights. And there are times, Lord, I thank you that you have tried me and you found nothing to be concerned with. But, Lord... Help us to stay on that right path. Help us, God, to turn to you. And, and Lord, whenever we're feeling frail, whenever we're feeling weak, whenever we're feeling frustrated, and a, a whole list of other feelings that we might have, let us be reminded that we can trust you. Lord, your word says that you'll show me the path of life. Your word tells us that in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Lord, I have set you before me, and I will not be moved. Thank you, God, for being who you are. And thank you, Lord, that you're not done making me into who I should be. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.